Good afternoon. A special welcome to all of you who are visiting St. Teresa's. And a very Merry Christmas to you all. Just a couple quick announcements before we begin Mass. During Mass, please follow the directions of your usher. Be mindful of physical distancing if you need to use the restroom or get up for any other reason. Keep your face covering on through the entirety of Mass and refrain from singing any of the hymns or Mass parts. And as we begin our Mass, let us all stand up. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. A warm welcome to all of you here and to the hundreds of people uh, watching through live stream. There's hundreds of households watching the different liturgies, um, up to 600 actually, which is beautiful. And we gather on this beginning of Christmas. We gather as the church filled with joy in the midst of a difficult moment. We are still filled with joy. And this Christmas is going to be perhaps the best Christmas ever because this is where God has placed us in this moment, in this time, in the midst of a worldwide pandemic. Christmas is celebrated in joy. Nothing can steal Christmas from us. That's the message of our children's liturgy this evening, this afternoon. It's the message of my favorite person in the world, the Grinch. Nothing ever needs steal Christmas from us. And I hope you let that sink in as the liturgy proceeds, as the Grinch makes a little bit of an appearance later on. So we open our hearts to the power and the joy and the happiness of the Christmas mystery.
Lord Jesus, you are the light of love. Lord, have mercy. You are the light of peace. Christ, have mercy. You are the light of hope. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. And let us sing the praises of our God. Let us pray. O God, who gladden us year after year as we wait in hope for our redemption, grant that just as we joyfully welcome your only begotten Son as our Redeemer, we may also merit to face him confidently when he comes once again in love, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing as they rejoice before you as at the harvest, 
as people make merry when dividing spoils. For the yoke that burdened them, the pole on their shoulder, and the rod of their taskmaster, you have smashed, as on the day of Midian. For every boot that trampled in battle, every cloak rolled in blood, will be burned as fuel for flames. For a child is born to us, a son is given us, upon his shoulder dominion rests. They call him Wonder Counselor, God Hero, Father Forever, Prince of Peace. His dominion is vast and forever peaceful. From David's throne and over his kingdom, which he confirms and sustains by judgment and justice, both now and forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. Beloved, the grace of God has appeared, saving all, and training us to reject godless ways and worldly desires, and to live temperately, justly, and devoutly in this age, as we await the blessed hope, the appearance of the glory of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to deliver us from all lawlessness and to cleanse for himself a people as his own, eager to do what is good. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria. So all went to be enrolled, each to their own town. And Joseph too went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, called Bethlehem, because he was the, of the house and the family of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have the child. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were shepherds in the region living in the fields, keeping the night watch over their flock. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were struck with great fear. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For today, in the city of David, a Savior has been born for you, Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly, there was a multitude of the heavenly hosts with the angel, praising God, saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. The Gospel of the Lord. Once again, a welcome to all. This is a children's liturgy, a family liturgy, and I wanted to do something, something to not make anyone have to think too much. I just wanted to give you a liturgy of joy. That's it. A joyful liturgy of celebration. That's what I wanted to give you. And that's my only prayer at this beautiful late afternoon liturgy is to fill you with some sense of joy that begins with a child, the baby. And I speak to the children in our church. We have a number of them. But I speak especially to the child in all those who are no longer children, all you adults. I speak to the child yet to come alive in your heart. I speak to children. And I've got over a hundred children in my midst. And I'm hoping and praying you let a message of joy somehow break through in your heart that you leave here with a lighter step in the church. And those of you, wherever the cameras are, those of you who are watching, perhaps this liturgy will also fill you with a beautiful sense of childlike joy. And the inspiration brought me back decades and decades ago. The very first time a program appeared on the air, I was nine years old. And I just remember the program because I fell in love. I fell in love watching it with my family. I fell in love with The Grinch. And it's one of my favorite stories. I haven't seen it in probably 40 years until I prepared for the homily. I got the DVD. I watched, I watched, and I remembered 
the memories of a little boy of nine years old watching on a black and white television. Some of you are old enough to remember that. And I remember my dad and my mom and my sister. I remember watching it because it was an unusual program back then. For in our times, that was unusual, believe it or not. Charlie Brown was the next year. So I was fortunate in my childhood to have this magnificent creature called the Grinch. And I loved him. And I loved watching it last night, all 25 and a half minutes of it. It brought back memories and joy of a little creature who really thought he could take away joy. That's at the heart of this story, the Grinch. He thought he could steal their joy by stealing the external Santa Claus gifts. They even had Santa Claus back then. He thought he could steal all their decorations, all their turkeys and their dressings and their cakes and their plum puddings, all their Christmas trees, all their stars, their outdoor decorations, indoor decorations, all their mantelpiece decorations over the fireplace. And he did. He stole it all. I, I give him credit. He was very, very ingenious because 53 years, he said, he endured this. What did he hate? Do you remember what he hated? And I always remember what he hated as a little boy because I didn't understand it. What he hated the most was the singing and the sound of music. And he couldn't stand it. 53 years of it. This year was going to be different. In the middle of the night, he put on a Santa Claus outfit. Thank God he did it because one little girl woke up. He stole it all, went back up on his lonely mountain, and he woke up the next morning, and what happened? What happened to the Grinch? Remember, his heart, over 53 years, became tiny, a little two sizes smaller than it should be. So his heart was hard and small. And he woke up, and he could hear the people and the children singing. He could hear the joy in their voice. And he said, how can this be? I, can't, I, I thought I took everything. Did I leave something? He realized he could take and steal everything that you can see. Everything that Santa brings could be taken. But he could not steal their joy. He could not steal their joy. No one can steal your joy. No one or nothing can steal your joy. No pandemic, no church half empty, nothing need diminish our joy in life and in the life we've been given. And these are his words. Maybe Christmas is more than a store. Maybe Christmas is oh so much more. What does he do? That little heart, thanks to Amazon, this little heart, <laughs> if you notice, this is the only size I could get when you're rushing to make a homily come to life. This is what you get. It's a little heart, but it's three sizes bigger. The music, the joy, the realization that they still had the joy opened his heart in joy. He became a different man. And what does he do? He stops being isolated from the people in his own horrible cold world with a poor reindeer dog. I always, I love dogs, reindeer dogs, love them all. He didn't even like him, he was so cute. He brings them back down. What does the Grinch do? He goes and he brings back what he stole, the visible signs of love. He gives it back to them. And what do they do? This is what we, we miss. I miss this as all these decades. What happens in the point of the story? And it's the point of Jesus and Christmas. The who, people, the little children, opened their arms to the Grinch, knowing what he had done. 
and they welcomed him to the table. And they asked him to be the one to cut the great feast of turkey. They asked him to be at the head of the table to carve the big beast, the big, the big roast. They asked him to do it. That's what Christmas is about, overturning the human heart. Because our God has a heart we could never even begin to imagine the heart of God. The, God of, the heart of God is a billion times bigger than we could ever imagine. And God did not descend from a mountain like this little guy, cold mountain. God descended from the warmth of heaven. He entered into the cold, dark, dank cave called the manger, the crib. He entered into our lives in Jesus the Christ, the light and the only light. He entered in poverty. He entered in discomfort. He entered being rejected. This is how this little baby entered, much like the Grinch. And he enters all the villages of humankind for all times and all places. We celebrate at Christmas the reality of the Word made flesh, the baby Jesus, cracking open our heart like this little guy and going back into life with joy. And my message is to all of you childlike adults, do not let anyone or anything take away your joy. Your joy in your heart gives birth to the Christ child and to the Grinch. Your, your heart can expand in love. Christmas is all about the pandemic. This should be the greatest Christmas we've ever celebrated. I will remember this forever. This Christmas will stand out in my memory if I live 20 or 30, however long. This Christmas will stand out even more so than the one in which I was nine years old watching The Grinch with my family. Because this one is connected with suffering and darkness. A friend of mine is entering hospice tonight in his late 70s. A person I know is facing addiction, the darkness of addiction. And these are people that are not depressed. They're filled with hope in the midst of an illness and an addiction in the midst of another friend who's lost her job. Is this Christmas not for her? Is this Christmas not for the man and going into hospice right now? How dare we say, oh, poor thing. It's for the people who are suffering. That's the purpose of Christmas. It's to open and crack open the heart like the little Grinch. It's a beautiful, beautiful feast. I'm going to end with Dr. Seuss, because his words are so much better than mine. And I hope you hear these words. By the way, I love the music. And I know, I know Jason's going to play a little bit in a little bit. I love the music. Don't you love the music? It just, wait a minute. I'm not talking about his music. I'm talking about the music of Whoville. The heck with your music. I'm talking about the song. That's my favorite Christmas song. But every who down in Whoville, the tall and the small, was singing without any presence at all. Listen to that. They were singing without any presence at all. He hadn't stopped Christmas from coming. Christmas came. Somehow or other, it came just the same. And the Grinch, with his Grinch feet ice cold in the snow, stood puzzling. How could this be so? It came without ribbons. It came without presents. It came without tags. It came without boxes and trees and bags. He puzzled three hours till his puzzler was sore. Then the Grinch thought of something he never thought before. Maybe Christmas doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas perhaps means a little bit more. And what happened then? Well, in Whoville, they say that the Grinch's small heart grew three times larger that day. And the minute his heart didn't feel so tight and small, he whizzed with his load through the bright morning light. He brought back the toys and the food for the feast. 
and he himself, the Grinch, carved the roast beef. What did I do with my Grinch? Here he is. It's a tradition in so many cultures around the world. My 6 o'clock mass is going to talk about all the nativity sets that you see in the church in the different countries. It's to put figures in the nativity, both fiction and nonfiction, to put figures in the nativity that mean something to you or your culture or your time. And I thought to myself, I perched him on the tree. I thought, where does the Grinch, where would he be now with the people of Whoville? He would be in the manger with Jesus. And so I'm going to process, before I process with the Christ child, with this beautiful little guy, a symbol of hearts broken wide open, a symbol of God's heart giving us the baby Jesus, a symbol of the manger, Christ being placed in the manger, food for life. He becomes a symbol we can change. He becomes a symbol of don't let anyone take your joy away from you. Don't. Be a person of joy. Bring joy to people. Don't be a person who takes away joy. And so I process with our wonderful little guy to the place of birth. Merry Christmas. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us, for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, rose again on the third day. In accordance to the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. Believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds in the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Deepest night, the light of God shines brightest in our Savior, Jesus the Lord. We pray in his name, asking that God's salvation will reach all the ends of the earth that all members of the church be renewed by the loving mercy of our God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who seek security or advantage by means of violence be converted to seeking the peace of our God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That unemployed, impoverished, and marginalized persons here in our midst and far away find deliverance in the justice of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who suffer from disease and injury know the healing love of our God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who worship here, weighed down by the yoke of our sinfulness, rejoice in the liberating power of our God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, in this Mass we remember Ronald Bishta, and John and Mildred Busiak. For those who died, let they live forever in the radiant glory of our God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we also pray for those who recently lost their lives to violence in the city of Chicago. Louise Flores, Andre Roberts, Jejuan Nile, Michael Frigo, and Christopher Ray Riley. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for all who are in special need of our prayers, 
for those for whom we have promised to pray, and we, for those we pause to remember in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In this difficult time of isolation and separation, we pray for all those who are struggling with illnesses of all kinds, those touched by the pandemic, especially in their loneliness, and family members who can't be with their loved ones. We pray for all those struggling with all sorts of illnesses. We pray for first responders, for nurses, doctors, all care workers, that they be safe and healthy. We pray for all the people in our parish and your families and friends who are sick to pray for Frank Butler, the man I mentioned in my homily, a friend who is beginning his hospice treatment. And for all those, may this liturgy touch them and may this liturgy, I know they're watching, heal them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, your Holy Spirit guides us in the path of discipleship by these prayers and this Christmas liturgy. May the power of the Spirit touch all of our hearts so that we may judge wisely the things of earth and love everything of heaven through Christ our Lord. Please be seated as we present the altar.
acceptable to God the Almighty Father. As we look forward, O oh Lord, to the coming festivities of Christmas, may we serve you all the more eagerly for knowing that in them you make manifest the beginnings of our redemption through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just in your salvation to give you thanks, Lord God, for in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the minds and the hearts of all of us. So that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love and joy of things invisible. The angels, the thrones, the archangels, the hosts and the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of glory. the fount of all holiness. Make these gifts holy by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed, he entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples. Take this, all of you, eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was done, he took the chalice, giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, this chalice of salvation. We pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Spirit, remembering your church throughout the world, bring into the fullness of charity, Francis, our Pope, Blazer, Bishop, and all those who lead us in faith. Remember those who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face, together with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, and our Mother with St. Joseph. With St. Teresa of Avila, the saints who please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise you and glorify you through your Son, Jesus, who is the Christ. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. with the risen Lord and pray the prayer that he himself gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from all that is evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be free from sin and safe from all fear as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace, that even with peace I gave you, not on our sins, in the faith of your church. And graciously grant this church peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share Christmas peace. Oh, the Lamb of God, be the one who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy you should enter into my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ strengthen all of us to help God's poor. Amen.
Hello everyone, my name is Mark. I am on staff here at St. Teresa of Avila. I want to take a moment to say Merry Christmas from the entire St. Teresa staff. We're, we're, we're glad they were able to join us at home or um, at home or here. Um, I just want to give a, a quick announcement about a gift that we want to give you um, 
at, from the staff. Um, and if you've been coming to Sunday Mass, I've been talking about it uh, a little bit. But we're running a program in a few weeks called Alpha starting January 21st. Uh, it's an introduction to community and spirituality. So um, if you've been, uh, if you're looking for a community, if you've been away from church for a while, if you're looking to learn new perspectives on spirituality and communion, community, feel free to check us out. Um, our registration's online, or I'm going to be in the back corner over there after Mass, and I'd love to talk to you about it. So thank you, and I'll give it back to Father Frank. Thank you, Mark, and uh, for all your hard work in trying to reach those who are not here in church and those who have no religion. Please join friends and neighbors tonight, Christmas Eve, at 9 p.m. outside your home throughout Lincoln Park and beyond. Bring your voice, light a candle, a flashlight, or a cell phone. At 9.09 in the city of Chicago, we'll be singing one of the oldest Christmas carols, Silent Night. So at 9.09 p.m. tonight, light a candle and go outside and sing Silent Night, which would be a beautiful way to welcome the Christ child. Finally, I've been wanting to do this for so many years. It's my gift to you. Um, it's a visual. I've taken together lots of photos of Christmas, and I have a song that is my favorite song from the movie Scrooge um, in 1970. And Jason found the, the perfect rendition of it, and he put together this beautiful, um, beautiful visual. It's a gift from what's to you. And um, hopefully um, it will work. If it does, great. If it doesn't, uh, mercy and forgiveness will be uh, in abundance tonight. We don't want the offertory, and that's good, but <laughs> we've got to have the offertory, but thank you. This is it, and it's beautiful. Yeah. 
That's magnificent. Merry Christmas. And thank you, Jason. I love, I've been waiting to do that for so many years. It's worked in 2020, in the middle of a pandemic. That is the most beautiful thing that Jason put together. It's my gift to you. Thank you. Have a beautiful, beautiful, blessed Christmas. Enjoy. Let it rip. Just let that joy out. Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. Let us stand. Grant, O Lord, we pray that we may draw near to the joy in celebrating the Christmas nativity of your only begotten Son, by whose heavenly mystery we receive his body and blood as food and drink, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. May God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Mass and I will go in peace to serve the poor. And I'm going to go right now outside and distribute communion as cars come up and as people in the neighborhood come up. They've been asked to come up and receive communion um, outside for those that feel more better, better to do it that way. So I'm going to go right now outside. Happy, beautiful, blessed Christmas to you all. Thank you for everything. You're ph phenomenal. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And watch the Grinch. Watch that Grinch.